The Guybra Ghost Mystery is one of the most interesting poltergeist cases that never gets talked about. Having taken place a hundred years ago, the case has a lot of interesting aspects, and there's even a lost film that was made about the case. Today, let's take a look at the Guybra Ghost Mystery. The case takes place in Guyra, New South Wales in April of 1921 and was centered around the Bowen family and their home. The family had experienced tragedy recently when May, a daughter of Catherine Bowen's previous marriage, had died a few months before the strange happenings occurred. William Bowen and his family were still recovering, but his 12-year-old daughter Minnie seemed to be taking the loss especially hard. The grieving was interrupted when one night phantom knocking was heard on the walls of the home. The sounds would occur randomly over the next few days, but on the third night it is said that they started sounding extremely violent. A newspaper at the time reported that Minnie had told her family that May was trying to communicate with them, but she only wanted her messages to be shared with her mother. The family encouraged communication with May, but things escalated quickly. Rocks were thrown through the windows, voices were heard inside the home, and other strange occurrences happened inside. It got so bad that they called the local police to watch over the house, but even the policemen started reporting seeing rocks stacked up against the house, hearing strange voices, and one cop was even sent home because the activity disturbed him so much. The Bowen sent Minnie to her grandmother's house, and the activity stopped at the Bowen home, but it continued at the grandmother's house. At this point, the whole town was trying to help the family solve the mystery, and they too started reporting paranormal activity around the town. The town was so scared that they started sleeping with weapons, boarding up their houses and windows, but the hauntings continued and windows were still bashed out. In late April, a man by the name of Harry J. Moores, who was known to be a good paranormal investigator and was a friend of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, stopped by to investigate the hauntings. He would later tell a newspaper that he found the town hosting endless vigils to try and please the spirits, and he was convinced a poltergeist was a play here. At this point, the townspeople were getting mad at the Bowens because they felt that they were the cause of all the problems in the town and the blame was especially forced on young Minnie, who seemed to be the only one who could communicate with the spirits. A few weeks after Minnie was brought back home from her grandmother's house, the activity simply stopped. Nothing else was ever reported and life slowly returned to normal. A short time later, Minnie was interviewed by a local newspaper about the haunting and she confessed to throwing some of the stones that were attributed to the ghost and some people claim that she was throwing her voice to sound like May, and that she had help from local pranksters. So this is a very interesting case that I honestly didn't know existed until a few days ago. It reminds me a little bit of some of the other poltergeist cases that are reported around the time, and also a little bit of the Enfield poltergeist, which Anne Lorraine Warren investigated. Most of these cases do center around young teens, preteens, and I think it is very possible that many could be the cause of this, whether directly or indirectly. It was even theorized by Moores to uh, the Sunday Times and newspaper in the area that she was a conduit and that either she was faking it herself or that the spirits were channeling through her because she was the only one that saw interest in them at first when no one else believed them. Regardless of what the truth of this legend is, it is still, still really interesting to read about because even though there is an explanation somewhat for it, all of the activity that was reported has not been explained. So the story doesn't end here, it actually gets really interesting. So in 1921, this guy by the name of John Cosgrove, who was a screenwriter, decided to make a film about the Guy Ghost Mystery. And it is interesting because the haunting took place in April of 1921, and he went to go film in around May or June of, you know, 1921. And it's kind of funny because, you know, the main character was Sherlock Doyle, which, you know, the guy who investigated the case was a friend of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle who created Sherlock Holmes. And judging by all accounts, the movie was a comedy. It was not meant to be taken seriously at all and was not really making fun of the hauntings, but it was supposed to be a lighthearted approach to the hauntings. Something else that's very interesting about this film is that it was filmed on location where the haunting actually took place and the Bowen family was actually in the film. They didn't play themselves, but they did play some of the townspeople. 
and it, it's reported that at first they were apprehensive about joining the film because they did, they saw it as you know someone wanting to make a joke about some very real hauntings, but Cosgrove managed to convince them, and they were on board with it, and they were a big help apparently. So the film screened later that year, and it was attributed to bad reviews, and no one liked it. It did terrible at the box office. And all the critics at the time said that it was only worth seeing if you have an interest in the supernatural and you're looking for a good laugh. So unfortunately, the film is lost. It was either destroyed in an archive or simply because it didn't do well, it was thrown away, which was not uncommon for films at the time. The only thing that really exists of it are a few movie posters, apparently, is about all that exists. But it's still really interesting that you know, between April and June of 1921, just all of this stuff happened to the Bowen family. And it's got an interesting beginning, and it is kind of sad that, you know, the film was a comedy and didn't take their story very seriously. Um, but apparently, there was an attempt or an interest in making another movie, a more serious movie, about the Guyver Ghost mystery later in the 1920s, but nothing ever happened.